Hey, this is my uh, first uh, Flat Earth related video, so please bear with me. Uh, flat Earth is becoming a bit of a phenomenon, well, has become a bit of a phenomenon on the internet uh, starting sometime last year, around April or so, well, on YouTube primarily. Now here you see a time lapse of the moon coming up uh, in the Taurus constellation from in November. Now there are two uh, claims made of the moon. One, that it is a light and not a three-dimensional body. So here I have a sequence of photographs of the moon that I've taken myself. Uh, look at the shadows and the craters. Use the pause if you have to. Um, it's clearly a rock, big well, a world. So I devised an experiment for the other claim, which is that the moon chills with its okay, light. What you're looking at here is the setup for the moonlight experiment. Uh, this is sensor A, this is sensor B, and I have a clear cup for control, as in case it's so there's a breeze or something, and a cup covered in aluminum foil to provide shade. So basically, and a USB port to send data to the computer for logging purposes so that it'll be very easy to see what, if anything, happens. The basic protocol is allow the temperature sensors to reach their a stable ambient temperature. And uh, the 22nd is supposed to be clear, although right now it's overcast, so I don't know. But the protocol is one sensor gets covered with the clear cup and the other sensor gets covered with the aluminum cup and is therefore in shade. We let them sit for a while, reach an equilibrium, and then pull them both off. Then we let them reach an equilibrium again and pull a swap. And this should be able to establish what effect the light has on the sensors. Okay, I did a calibration test here. Uh, just tossed it in the freezer and recorded it as it warmed up afterwards. And here it is set up in the sunlight to do a control experiment. Uh, and as you can see, there is good sunlight to work with, light cloud cover. Now here you can actually see where I covered up sensor A as its temperature dips and B. And here you can see the difference as they cross the zero line, very distinct. And now to look for the moon. As you can see, uh, I've got some cloud cover to contend with, but not a lot. Uh, the moon was, I mean, you can see stars. The moon was casting a distinct shadow, although try and photograph a shadow with a flash. <laughs> Can't do it. Okay, hello moon. It is 2114, February 22nd. Uh, Philadelphia time. As you can see, there is a bit of haze. I can show you how hazy it is. Let's uh, pull out. You can see it's uh, a bit hazier than one would like for this type of experiment. But rain is scheduled for the next three days. So I got to work with what I got. Anyway.
I've taken the apparatus inside, uh, recorded the data. I'll throw it into numbers and see what kind of uh, results I've gotten. As I'll explain in the full video, I did a calibration run, which involved chucking the stuff in the freezer, letting it get cold, and then hooking it up, watching it warm up. And I did a sunlight test where I did the experiment, but in sunlight, to confirm that the temperature sensors would at least actually respond and they did so I'll be showing that by the way this is not the uh, the movement you're seeing is not the camera moving on the tripod It is the relative motion of the camera and the moon, and the tripod and camera are stationary with respect to the Earth. So make of that what you will. And as you can see, the data shows nothing. In fact, the lines are further apart than I'd hoped for, and they trend closer together, but I'm getting a negative result here. No effect from the moonlight whatsoever. And here you can see the tripod and the equipment that's uh, sensor A covered and sensor B covered. So there you go. My final conclusions are, quite simply, that the moon, by direct observation, is a rocky world. And moonlight does not cool things down. So, I think we can dispose of both of those ideas. Uh, if you disagree, uh, feel free to comment. And I should also point out, look in the uh, video information section. I have a link to all the data, including the source code used on the Arduino uh, for the Arduino IDE so that you could reproduce the experiment. Uh, the temperature sensors used were TMP36 models. Uh, the data sheet for the temperature sensors is also included in the download, as are the images of the moon used in this video. So you will be able to take a closer look at them and the EXIF header information of the images has exact time and date uh, for when the pictures were taken. So, that is all. Have a good night, evening, day, whatever.